G'day Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. This video is a hardware review of another unit the VKB sent me to check out for you. This is the GNX THQ plus THQ-V plus SEM-V combo with the World War II add-ons. There's a few acronyms to unpack, so we'll look at exactly what these are. The THQ, this is the throttle quadrant, and there are two of these with three axes and eight buttons each. The THQ-V, this is another throttle quadrant. However, you can see in this one, the eight buttons are on top of the three axes. So this quadrant is inverted compared to the other two throttle quadrants, and that lets you mount it vertically. The SEM, this is the side extension module. This has a few components we're gonna look at in a minute. The MFH, this is the multifunctional holder. This is what holds all those components together. There's a World War II THQ grip. So this is the extra add-on which you put on to one of the throttle quadrants and it replicates a World War II German style throttle. And then there's the KG-12 GNX grip. This is another add-on for World War II. However, this is used to replace the standard grip which comes with the Gladiator NXT and NXT Evo. For how this unit finishes up when you assemble it, there's a surprisingly large amount of parts packed into the boxes it came in. There's a lot of optional pieces, so at the first moment of me opening these boxes up and laying them out, I was like, uh, crap, this is a lot of stuff. And I wasn't really sure if I could put it together. Um, I did find it a little bit daunting at first, and I actually put off assembling it for a couple of weeks. It ended up being easier to put together than I thought once I got it started. It just took a bit of time. Um, however, just like with the Gladiator NXT, everything you need to assemble it is provided, and there's a great range of videos available that walk you through the assembly process here but I actually ended up having to put this together twice. Once when I was living in Atlanta, and then again after I moved to Boston. And as you can see, the second time around, I did alter the construction slightly as that's what I ended up preferring. And this is all made of the same hard plastic that the Gladiator is made of too. And I expect it's gonna to hold together well over time. Once you assemble it though, you're gonna to need to get it going for the first time. And this did pose a problem for me initially. Um, but after using that VKB device config software though, I got it up and running and uh, you can find the software here when you need it. Anyway, time to have a look in depth what we have here with this setup. So it comes with three throttle quadrants and two of them, which are the THQs, are on the bottom. And then there's the plus V one, which is up on top. And each one comes with three axes each. So between them, there are nine axes total available for you to use. But as you can see, since I have the World War II throttle, I have that situated on one of the quadrants and that takes up two axes. So I'm down to seven remaining, but even still that's a lot to have, especially if you're flying single engine. The axes are really responsive with adjustable dampening on them. So you can set the amount of resistance while moving them. And this is helpful when you're trying to aim for that precise point along the axis. The handles though, they can require a bit of a lighter touch using your thumb and forefinger when you want that real precision. Uh, rather than having the gross motor movement of your entire hand like you have on the World War II throttle if you use that. When putting the handles together, I installed them so they were as tall as possible. This way you can maximize the total range of movement. But even then, they still felt a little bit short, so it would be nice if the levers were longer, which would give you a more precise range of movement. But the axes are all pretty smooth anyway, so it's not a huge issue. The knobs of the levers can be set however you want, but I chose to use gray ones for RPM and the red for mixture, as that's what I would expect to see. And they all come in different shapes that are available as well. So this is something useful in VR, so you can actually feel the difference between different levers without having to look at them. Now say you didn't have the World War II throttle and you're using the levers for throttles, you could link them together or link any other axis if you wanted to using a small joining piece. I wouldn't really recommend using this though, especially if you're focused on multi-engine flying because the nature of this kind of flying means that at some point you will be flying single engine. So being able to have all those controls separate is very important in my opinion. The buttons all exhibit some resistance that prevents accidental pressure on them and provide tactile feedback when they get pressed. The SEM is the side extension module and it has several things we'll go over. It includes controls for the landing gear, flaps, a rotary switch with four positions, two rocker switches with buttons in the center, customizable LED lights, and a red start button. The landing gear control has indicator lights, but these are based on the switch position on the HOTAS and not the in-game gear position. 
This switch can also be customized to use either two detents, three detents, or it can have no detents and be used as an axis. A flap control is also present, and this can be customized similar to the landing gear in terms of detents, but it can have up to four detent positions as well as the axis. This is a pretty useful panel for controls that you may not reach for very often. So if you're someone who uses flaps in a dogfight, you might want to assign them somewhere else in order to let you keep your hand on the throttle. The rotary switch works as you expect it to, requiring good pressure to move and has a nice solid click when you change positions. The two rocker switches go up and down and they spring back to centre when you release your pressure. So for me, this is the go-to switch if I was adjusting propeller pitch manually while I use the buttons in the center to swap between automatic and manual propeller pitch control as needed. My only dislike with the side extension module are the shapes of the knobs used for the landing gear and flap controls. My first instinct when putting them on was actually in reverse to how they're supposed to go, because based on the shape, I expect the flat piece to be for the flaps and the rounder piece to be for the gear, and they don't fit right if I tried swapping them around, so I just had to leave them as they were. For the World War II THQ grip, this is again made of the same plastic and comes with a textured handle that fits the hand well. It's clearly distinguishable as being styled after a German World War II throttle. I do like the extra height that this provides compared to the more simple levers on the other axes if you're using those as a throttle, simply because this will give you more range of movement. Plus, it feels more natural just using your whole hand to move a throttle, rather than relying on thumb and forefinger on the levers. It has four buttons total, two on the front of the handle, and two on the right side, which sit either side of a rocker switch that goes up and down. I quite like this grip add-on, but it will limit you to single engine operations in my opinion. And while you can still use it for multi-engine airplanes, losing the ability to control the other throttle independently is a noticeable thing to lose from a pilot's perspective. I don't see it as a deal breaker per se, but if you're looking to build good procedural habits for multi-engine flying, this is something you need to keep in mind. The KG-12 GNX grip is a replacement grip that is compatible with the Gladiator NXT and the NXT EVO that is a German-styled World War II grip. Replacing the original grip is demonstrated pretty well by VKB with a video like they do with all their other products, so if you need to do that you can reference it. The grip itself is the same manufacturing quality like everything else, with a nice texture on the grip which your hand conforms to well, but it still retains its twisting ability for the rudder axis if you need it. The metal trigger guard can fold upward, and when it does, it makes the machine gun button harder to use, and it also blocks the bomb release button. So in essence, this trigger can function as a form of a safety catch if you wanted to use it that way, otherwise I will just leave it alone in the down position all the time. Because this grip is World War II focused, you're going to find there's a reduction in overall functionality compared to the original stick, having only 4 buttons with an 8 way point of view hat. This simplicity does have its own appeal though, because this way you can focus on the most important elements of what you want bound to the stick. These buttons all have the usual tactile feedback when pressing them, but just be mindful of the button on the left side of the stick. Since it is flush with the stick, it's actually a little tougher to push, and you'll probably need to use your ring finger to do it. So if you're using this for a weapon command, it may cause your hand tightness to increase on the grip, and this could throw your aim off slightly. The pinky metal lever at the base is attached to a button, which is fine depending on what kind of use you want for it. Among a few British and Russian World War II airplanes though, this represents a single brake lever which lets you control brake pressure and differential braking by using rudder at the same time. And it would have been nice if this part of the stick was an axis rather than a button. Overall though, if you want a World War II aesthetic and function to your stick, then this one will work great. My overall impression of the system is pretty good. It's nice and stable in the desk, which is thanks to its weight, along with rubber plates, and they sit on along the bottom, and they add a nice amount of friction which keeps it in place while you're using it. Now regarding its size, it is a bigger unit, so it's going to take up more desk space obviously, but with the added vertical component, it actually helps it feel a little bit more compact and keeps the top half quickly accessible at the same time. After using this for a little while, this larger type of setup is definitely geared towards more multi-engine flying rather than single engine. So you feel at home using this if you're flying combat aircraft such as a BF-4 Mano, Mosquito, or any other manner of civilian airplanes you'd find in Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane. However, by adding the World War II throttle onto it, this will let you focus on single engine if that's going to be your preference. 
One thing I was interested in trying is actually attaching the Gladiator NXT onto the right throttle quadrant. But I found out you can do that, but you need an extra part to link them together, which I didn't have. Now, if you're someone who's really tight on space and you wanted to use it solely for fighters with the World War II throttle and stick, you can cut this back to just having a single throttle quadrant with the side extension module. And this way you can start out with a smaller setup and then add pieces if you wanted to expand it, depending on the type of flying you do. So that's the good thing about this being a modular system. You can get as much as you need and customize it from there. So I think that pretty much covers my thoughts about this unit. If you happen to have it and want any pass on any experience you've had, feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, remember to fly safe and check six.